Let's talk about Cursor AI because I have pretty much enjoyed overall using this tool, but I've definitely found a few things annoying that I could rant, ramble, bitch about, whatever. Uh, so let's get right into it. So I think the first thing to keep in mind is I'm just a guy on the internet, right? Like I have my own thoughts, opinions about building software and I have the experiences they have. And also I'm a web developer, right? So like I've done full stack, uh, web based JavaScript stuff, TypeScript. So like call me a tech bro if you want, right? But my opinions are going to be like heavily sort of influenced by the space that I work in. So now that that's out of the way into cursor, um, Right off the bat, I think the first thing that I think is fantastic about it is I think it's very good value. So I'm on the $20 a month plan and you know, I should log into the dashboard and see like there's that quota for like how much of like the pro models I think I can use maybe. I'm only coding a couple hours a day at this point, right? Just like working on side projects where eventually one of them maybe will turn into a business, right? If I can deliver value to the markets, but you know, for now, like I'm not even coming close to, to whatever the limit on that uh, quota is for, for the premium model. Uh, I'm mostly using the cloud 3.5 Sonnet for coding and everything. Uh, and I mostly use the composer feature and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few moments. Um, but overall, I'm very happy with the value exchange. I feel like $20 a month. I mean, where I'm at in the US, uh, a burrito, you know, from a phenomenal uh, lunch food place is like $13, right? So it's less than two burritos a month. Um, for me to justify this, I mean, this is, I can justify this cold in my sleep, in the shower or whatever. Um, so yeah, really big fan of that. I think another thing I really like about it, and they got a lot of hate on the internet for this, but I, I thought it was a positive, is it's a fork of VS Code. And why do I like this? I'm comfortable using VS Code. I've been using VS Code for a long time now. Um, it's, it's just like one of those things where for me to learn new tooling and use a new IDE for no real reason, for me, doesn't make sense. Uh, so, hey buddy. So the fact that I don't really have to relearn how VS code like on its face works is really nice. Uh, I don't want to create a firestorm in the comments here, but I like the, 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 like get tooling in VS code. So like I use the Git interface, right? When I'm, using version control. Um, some people, I guess, use the CLI. I used to use the CLI, like when I was in college and stuff. I don't use the CLI anymore, fight me. Um, but I really like that I don't have to like figure out a new workflow with like different buttons and stuff like that. I'm a very visual person. So the fact that everything just like looks the same, amazing. The composer thing I think overall is fantastic, but it does have some drawbacks. And so maybe we can talk about them at the same time. So, I found with Composer, it works much, much better when you give it the specific files you want it to touch. So I've had, I've had a couple scenarios. Let me just take up the dog here so he stops bothering me. I've had a couple scenarios where I'll be like, hey, find, you know, I'll be starting like a brand new project. And I'll be like, find the page.jsx project. I'm talking about like a Next.js project here for any JavaScript nerds or TypeScript nerds that are working here or watching here. I'll be like, find the, the page dot TSX file. And I want you to make like a very basic marketing page, right? Like we're not going to build a web app yet. I just want you to like find the page and, you know, start refactoring it. So it aligns to like this marketing page format that I found and I'll provide like a screenshot of a tweet where it's like the, the eight sections that are like, you know, proven for success. And like, if anyone hasn't seen this before, just like Google it. There's a fantastic resource uh, that I keep seeing on Twitter. That's like all the top marketing pages are like this format. And like, I kind of think it's true. Now I think you can have success many, many different ways with marketing, but if you don't know what you're doing, just like use this format, right? It's, it's solid. Um, but sometimes what composer will do is like create a new directory and then like create a new file. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like I want you to just look at the project, you know, read the file base and then find the file I'm referencing in the prompt and then like modify it. And even when you're specific about tasks, I would say like 5% of the time, it just like explodes and goes like way off the, off the rails. And so all you really have to do is reject all the changes, right? And then like start a new composer context and just like do it again. 
And the chance of it doing it again, in my experience, is slim. So I think hats off to the Cursor team in that even when I have issues, they're hard to replicate. And I think that this is the mark of like a pretty solid product, right? Like overall, this is very usable. And I'm nitpicking things. I'm complaining about like very small things that I'm just trying to be like honest with myself and, and, and you all of like things that actually kind of, let's call it, irritate me. So another thing it's able to do is read docs. So you can give it a link, right, in the prompt that you're feeding Composer. And it kind of like adds the link and like it, it's obvious when you're when you're typing in um, a link and providing docs that cursor is going to see it as like a web page. And it's pretty good about following examples for code and stuff. One thing that for whatever reason I have just not been able to figure out how to make my composer um, work with me on is when it's like, hey, I want you to use, you know, some shad CN component. That's like a library I, I've been using recently, which is a good open source library, very visually appealing. It like can't get the the syntax for installing the individual components. So like no matter what I do, I like cannot get cursor or composer, whatever you want to think about it. Or really, I guess this is the cloud 3.5 sonnet model to just give me like the right command for installing, you know, said um, component. Now here's the thing. This is like so easy to solve, right? Because I just click on the docs and then I just like copy paste it and then I just like replace the name of the component. Like if it's a button and I'm in, in my uh, CLI history and I just need to install the form component, I just like delete button and then type form and then enter, boom, I'm done. But, you know, to get to the point of singularity where like we're just letting this thing code for ourselves, uh, where we don't have to do anything, this is gonna have to work, right? Because this is just like a very simple dependency that it's just like UX components, right? That I'm not gonna really refactor at all, right? They just look good and they're generic. So I'm just gonna use them. Um, extend them if I need to, but I'm definitely not gonna rewrite them. Don't need to spend time on that. Uh, so that's another small nitpick. Um, another thing that I found it doesn't do fantastic is I like to use Drizzle for my ORM right now. This is just another library that I like. For whatever reason, halfway through my project, sometimes it, it tries to force me to use like Prisma or like some other random ORM. And it's one of those weird things like I have a dot cursor rules file in all of my projects. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically a hidden file that you put um, at the root of your, of your project directory. And it, it has a prompt that cursor will feed uh, the LLM every time that you give it like more information. So you could put things in it like, hey, I want you to like use this conventions when programming. Like for example, I want you to do kebab case instead of camel case. I want you to use favorite React server side components rather than client side components. I want you to do this, this, and that. And you can also give it like your preferred tech stack. So you can say like, hey, these are the tools I'm using in this project, so only use these tools. For some reason, Again, this is like not that often, but it does happen, especially when you work on a project like over the span of a couple of weeks, it will randomly just like try and rewrite my drizzle schema and make it like Prisma JS um, oriented. Like it'll try and use packages from Prisma. And it's like, whoa, 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 hit the pause button, zoom out. What are we doing, right? Why are we doing this, right? And sometimes I ask Composer, like, why are we doing this? And it like, it apologizes. It's like, oh, you're so right. I made a mistake. I'm so sorry. But I find with that individual composer, uh, like context, like the damage is done at that point, you got to just like create a new composer session and just like start the task over. Um, again, this is very workable, right? But you sort of have to know a little bit about what you're doing to like even catch what it's doing. Like if you have no idea uh, how some of these ORMs work, you may miss it, right? You may not really understand that, you know, there's, there's different things from different packages and like mixing them, like this is not something that you would do. Um, so that's just like a very small nit. Um, one other thing now that's coming to mind now that I'm just like word vomiting everything out here uh, at the camera, you have to be a little careful with regressions in terms of UX. So something that I think is a little tricky right now with the current state of the AI tooling is it's generative. And I think what I mean by this is if you continue to ask it the same question, it's gonna to continue to give you different outputs, right? Uh, pretty consistently different outputs. And what happens eventually is 
if you continue to work on the same feature or in the same set of files, eventually it will start messing with like Tailwind class names or it will swap out a component for another component if you have like a ton of Shad UI stuff or it'll change your color palette without you asking or it will change copy. And again, you can avoid this or kind of reject these changes if you're kind of just paying attention. Um, but I guess what I'm trying to say is you do have to supervise it, right? And again, not the end of the world, but like it isn't really the kind of thing where like I just will like give cursor a prompt and then go cook something like a fucking steak, right? And then come back, just like accept it and then continue moving. It's like I kind of have to look at the code. Um, and I find if I don't look at the code, if I'm not like really looking at every line of code that is being generated for me over time, I really lose sight of you know, where we were and where we're going. And it becomes a little bit difficult to like get rid of some of the regressions. Uh, so that just is what it is, right? I think like maybe a good way to think about this is it's not gonna, it's not gonna be able to do everything you can do without you. It's just gonna help you do more of what you can do with your oversight. Um, but all this said, overall, I think it's a phenomenal tool. I really should try some of the other tools like GitHub Copilot, I haven't tried it. Um, I think there's a couple other ones. There's like Lovable, I think is, is another one, like Lovable Left Dev, I might be botching that name. Let me know in the comments if, if I'm messing this up. Um, but I think like many things, right, now that I've started using Cursor and I've adopted it and I like it overall, even though I just listed some random things I don't like about it, um, I don't know if I'm gonna switch. Why? Because it's working for me, right? It's improved my workflow, seriously, like probably tenfold. Um, something that's been difficult in my programmer journey is I have wrist issues from programming in a laptop too much because I'm stupid. Um, don't be like me. But so now I have like these wrist pads, right? I have one here as well, and these help a lot. Um, and then I also have to just like make sure to not code for like 10 hours straight. Like I gotta take breaks, I gotta get outside. That was part of one of the reasons for getting the beautiful doggy, right? Is because what I get to do with him is I get to go outside every couple hours because he gotta use the bathroom. So um, that's been very, very good for me. Uh, big fan of doggy forced leaving the unit or the house. Um, but yeah, definitely wanna hear about what other people are thinking if they're using these tools, if at all. Um, want to hear your predictions for the future. Uh, if there's other firms that are making cool stuff that I don't know about, also let me know. I want to try them. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed this rant. If you did enjoy it, please consider subscribing. It does help out the channel. Uh, and I will catch everyone next time.